Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. Start your day tomorrow with the Daily Dog with Michelle Forto, the morning podcast on Dog Works Radio. Apple Podcast reviewer Patty Christensen calls it funny, smart, and filled with all the info I want to know about dogs. I love this show. Wake up with the Daily Dog, available on Dog Works Radio on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your shows. You are listening to The Daily Dog with your host, Michelle Forto. The Daily Dog offers training advice, tips and tricks, and maybe even a book or movie review, too. Hello and welcome, everybody. It's Michelle Forto with The Daily Dog. And on today's show, we're going to talk about a few things in a little bit different type of format. And I hope that you'll like it. And uh, let me know in the comment section on our Facebook page. And if you guys like this new format, we're going to stick with it for quite a while. So the Daily Dog is going to start off with the tip of the day. Today's tip is all about crate training. If you have a brand new puppy, your best tool, believe it or not, is not a basket full of toys it's going to be a crate and that crate is going to be utilized as a way to assist you with potty training and making a safe quiet place for your puppy to be when it needs to have some rest or just needs to be excluded from the family because it's a little bit too rambunctious we'll go into further detail about the importance of crate training on another show but that is our tip for today getting into our topic today It's probably another tip, but did you know that dental disease can affect your pet in some pretty significant ways? A lot of times we don't think about it. I know that uh, Robert and I grew up in a day and age where brushing your dog's teeth was not all that typical. So we will be the first to admit that we don't brush our dog's teeth. It's a bad thing to do, and as a canine behaviorist, we suggest the advocate for canine health care, this just is one of those things that we always forget to do. It's, it's also one of the easiest things to do. When we adopted our Siberian Husky Aneke many years ago, the first thing we noticed was he was missing a canine tooth, one of the large pointed ones. I don't know if he lost it due to injury or decay, but it didn't seem to bother him. After several years and, of course, many bones said to work well with in canine hygiene we did take him to our vet's office to have his teeth cleaned mind you he was well over 10 years old at the time they had to do blood work on him to make sure that the anesthesia would not harm him and they had to put him to sleep for the procedure several hours later his teeth were cleaned and they had to pull a few of them because they had cavities i was told this is how they do it now so, dental care for your pet is a pretty important thing. It, can, it has the same effect on their health as it does on our own. If you notice an odor coming from your pet's mouth, it may be a result of some form of dental disease. Your veterinarian can correctly diagnose the problem and suggest treatments. Here are some of the basic facts about dental disease. According to experts, many pets over the age of two have some sor- form of a periodontal disease. Any odor other than nice, clean-smelling breath can indicate a problem. Dental disease is graded in four steps. Grade 1, some tartar and breath odor. Grade 2, heavy tartar and some gum recession, gums are re- reddened and infected. Grade 3, severe tartar and gum recession, teeth are often loose, gums are reddened and inflamed, severe breath odor. Grade 4, severe tartar with tooth loss, severely infected gums, gums very receded, swollen and bleeding, and tooth roots are exposed. Severe breath odor. Considering that a human visits the dentist for a toothache, imagine how your pet feels with inflamed gums, heavy tartar, and loose teeth. Eating may become difficult. In addition to the discomfort, your pet is at risk for serious health conditions. 
As bacteria collects along the gum line, it produces acids. These acids gradually inflame the gum tissue and the ligaments that hold the teeth in place. As tartar builds and works its way under the gum, bacteria and acid continue to erode more tissue. Teeth become loosened and may start to fall out on their own. Bone from the jaw also becomes affected and starts to reabsorb, leaving loose teeth. As the mouth tissues become more swollen and infected, it will eventually start bleeding. Now the bloodstream can pick up the bacteria from the mouth and circulate it through your dog's entire body. Dental disease has been linked to kidney, heart, and sinus infections. This is why your veterinarian may prescribe antibiotics before your pet has any dental work done, as well as any procedure. Many clients have said their dog cats like, acts like a puppy again once the disease, teeth, and resulting infections have been addressed. Loose teeth are usually removed because too much damage has already occurred and they cannot be saved. Your dog can actually eat quite well and get along with no teeth if necessary and can live a longer and healthier life with a healthy mouth. So we urge you to visit your veterinarian and have your pet's teeth and gums evaluated. One additional thing, you guys, is if your mouth hurts, it makes you a crabby patty. You know, so keep that in mind. We get a lot of calls from clients from time to time that, you know, all of a sudden their four or five, six-year-old dog starts displaying some behaviors that are unwanted and out of character. Well, that could very well be because they've got a sore tooth. So get your dog into the vet regularly. Get the teeth checked out. Even if you opt not to have the dentist go ahead and and perform some hygiene and cleaning the teeth, at least you can talk with them about what are the best options to keep your dog's teeth clean on a regular basis yourself. So next we're going to talk about the breed of the day. The Borzoi, known here before 1936 as the Russian Wolfhound, is a sight hound dependent on his extreme speed, agility, and courage to pursue, overtake, and hold quarry. Today, these beautiful and intelligent dogs are as at home in our living rooms as they are in the field. With a history clouded by the misty past of Tsarist Russia, we know the dogs were bred by the Russian aristocracy for hundreds of years. There are, in fact, accounts of hunting expeditions of several Mongol rulers from the time of the conqueror Genghis Khan in the 13th century in which long hounds were mentioned as principal coursing dogs in Russia. The Borzoi today remains largely unchanged from his Russian ancestors, both in terms of his appearance, his quiet, gentle nature, and his abilities. He is a mainstay of the AKC lure coursing program. His intelligence and easy training have resulted in many obedience titles. While the hunt has been the primary purpose of the Borzoi, his beauty and temperament were also always of prime importance. He was always a companion par excellence and the amorant of the salon. Today, this noble breed easily finds its way to the heart of its owner and, while the circumstances of the breed have changed from those of Tsarist Russia, Borzoi remain true aristocrats. In general appearance, the Borzoi was originally bred for the coursing of wild game on more or less open terrain, relying on sight rather than scent. To accomplish this purpose, the Borzoi needed particular structural qualities to chase, catch, and hold his quarry. Special emphasis is placed on sound running gear, strong neck and jaws, courage and agility, combined with proper condition. The Borzoi should always possess unmistakable elegance with flowing lines, graceful in motion and repose. Males, masculine without coarseness, bitches, feminine and refined. Have you ever heard of a Borzoi? Have you ever owned a Borzoi? They sound like majestic, magical animals in today's chaotic world. Thanks for listening today. And remember, let us know if you like the new format of the show. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? 
each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Ford winner team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. Hi guys, it's Alex. If you are a fan of sled dog sports and the Iditarod, Mushing Radio is the show for you. Each Wednesday, we drop a new episode on Dog Works Radio. So be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you like our podcast, there are a few things you can do. You can take a couple of minutes and go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also check out all of our DogWorks Radio sponsors and promotions in our show notes. Another thing you can do is go over to Facebook, like our Facebook page, and one last thing, please tell all of your friends by spreading the word about DogWorks Radio. Thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate you. DogWorks Radio is produced by Robert Forto. Logo art by Angry Squirrel Studios. DogWorks Radio is produced in conjunction with KVRF 89.7 in Palmer, Alaska. For dog training advice, you can contact Alaska DogWorks at 907 841 1686 or visit their website at alaskadogworks.com. If you have a show idea or would like to be a guest, please contact us by sending an email to live at dogworksradio.com. <laughs>